Well, after a fantastic WrestleMania, what does WWE do? They hit on pilot mode. Pilot mode. And tonight on Monday Night Raw proved it. Right? They don't care about their show. And because we've seen a lot of things on the show tonight. Let's go over what we saw tonight. And before we can do that, I have one question, okay. Do you care about WrestleMania Backlash? The answer is, if you guess no, you are correct. And of course, before we get into this video, I made a video on Twitter of me clicking my, taking my remote control and taking and turning my TV off as soon as we saw the Texas Tornado match between Alpha Academy and Street Profits. If you could go do that on Twitter, you can look at it on Twitter now. And, and I also did that same thing on Instagram. And you can also follow, and speaking of that, you can follow me on Twitch, DeviantArt, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. Instagram. And subscribe to the channel for both Super John Cena Nick, Super Roman Reigns Nick, and Super AJ Styles Nick. Nick. You know, how soft is the WWE? We had a fantastic WrestleMania. May not be the. It was, it was actually one of the greatest WrestleManias ever. Outside of other matches that felt worse. Because the main event felt worse, which which we'll talk about that on to, on tomorrow's video, on off, on the, the new broad on the, on episode two at the broadcast, where we are going to be talking about what why the main event of WrestleMania was worse. Which will be involved in, which we'll be talking about night too. Monday Night Raw. Can Monday Night Raw get any momentum going into WrestleMania Backlash, Daddy? The answer is no. They can't do it. I don't know how can the momentum get, be going into WrestleMania Backlash. Because tonight we saw Cody Rhodes, we saw a champion contenders match. We saw a Caroline's, call it someone. Via finally came, Bianca Belair made her, came to Raw, with our new Raw Women's Champion. We saw an NXT Championship match on fucking Monday Night Raw. We saw MVP turn his back on Bobby Lashley. We saw Corey Graves and Carmella. Make out on color commentary. We had the also figuring the Usos versus Aki Brown Finn Balor. We had a Texas Tornado match between the Street Profits and Alpha Academy. And Roman Reigns closed the show. So, yeah. I really don't know how can Monday Night Raw get well linked tonight. But I don't know how we can... How you can look at... But I don't know how you're gonna look yourself in the mirror. Oh no, yeah. and that's that's a rivalry right there. Luckily it's only one rivalry and not two. Damn. But anyway, let's get rolling with Monday Night Raw. We got December to December coming up and ECW pay per view. Yes, I'm aware your contracts are expiring. I have no money. I don't have any money. No. Even despite the two like advertising things I just did, I don't know if I did, so like that. As, before we get into today's video, I wanna have you all subscribe to YouTube. Follow me on Twitch, DeviantArt, D Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. 
Oh, you, you don't miss any content on this channel. And also, subscribe to Super Roman Reigns Nick, Super John Cena Nick, and Super... And actually, Super Roman Reigns Nick, Super AJ Styles Nick, and Super John Cena Nick. Anyways. Let's get rolling with Monday Night Raw. So we begin Monday Night Raw with Cody Rose coming to... Addressing the universe as in coming to Monday Night Raw for the very first time ever since and I think the last time I saw him on Raw was in 2016. Leading into my question is Cody Raw is going to be now part of Monday Night Raw? Let's look at the video. So let's watch the poll. And people are chanting in Texas for Cody Rhodes. Because uh, he's talking about the Steve Woods. An emotional Cody Rhodes coming to Monday Night Raw tonight. Cody Rhodes is talking about this. And I do have the video. At least I don't get a copyright. Well, even though it might be there. So I hope you don't. Promo with Cody Rhodes is him talking about just his father, his heartfelt tribute to his late Dusty Rhodes, an entitled inspiration until Seth Rollins and then Seth Rollins comes out and then tries to shake hands and wondering what is still to come for the WrestleMania opponents. I'm hoping that we got WrestleMania back classed up now. And Seth Rollins is a Dancing all the way tonight in his pink tuxedo costume. I'm not gonna lie, he thought he looked good in silver costume. But nonetheless, there's another story for another day. 
Now, one thing I actually noticed is on something with the new wall wiener. It has an LED like movie thingy on the on the crowd, which is actually kind of shocking. Cause I'm I'm want to ask you the question in the comment section. And of course, right now, Cody Royce is currently on the free agent. Now, yes, and I want to see these people. I let me know in the comments section down below. Do you like the the new war arena, or do you think that it's just got off with a new LED arena? And also, I don't know how you can think in yourself. Was all of it. Oh. But nonetheless, I don't know how you could look yourself in the mirror into everything down to the T about this segment right there. And so everyone thinks that. So everyone wants to know where does this. And also, I'm kind of wondering where does Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes to go from here. We move on to that with a women's champ tag team number one contenders match between Sasha Banks and Naomi versus Real Ripley and Liv Morgan. You've got to be kidding me. Why is WWE saying we need championship cont A championship contenders match. I am done. Why can't I just don't mind if we do number one? It's a matter. But anyways, we need to. And also, so, it is Sasha and Naomi. Sasha and versus Na and Naomi versus we don't live. And also, I think it was earlier on today, WWE announced. That Sasha Banks and Naomi's names are named Boss and Glow. Which, I don't hate that name to be honest with you. I don't hate it. I just want to give it a chance. And it was a miscommunication between Real Ripley and Liv Morgan to open the door for both Tamden offense and the champion started reigning style. We are wondering, and, and I'm not going to lie, Sasha's attire was pretty cool. It's on the way, though. Although people are saying that we're probably going to get Bailey versus a mystery, and a mystery partner taking on Boss and Hug at Backlash. By the look of things. Look at him. Mm -hmm. I 
after the match. And we will play with stuck outside the ring to the point where Seth and Naomi will beat Liv Morgan. And then after the match, we will play with the the fans that wonder what the future holds. We will be playing Liv Morgan going for. We move on from that to Kevin Owens coming out to excuse for his WrestleMania performance. And he was moaning about over his loss to Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania. And you would never know how much what would Kevin Anderson. And I think Kevin Owen. Was ex was explaining what he is on this level after WrestleMania about where he goes on from he goes from here. Where does he? Where does he leave into? What does the future do for him? We can honestly cure this thing. What's gonna happen? We have Kevin on his neck, coming out of his loss to Stone Cold at WrestleMania. So we come out of that, Kevin Elias, also known as now, for the looking pictures on WWE.com, right now. So. Ezekiel, 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 Ezekiel comes out and interrupts Kevin Owens. And of course, if you don't know who Ezekiel is, if you guess Ezekiel Jackson, who is a former Intercontinental Champion, you guessed wrong, my friend. You guessed wrong. And to be honest with you, yeah, and uh, this is the, and also, this is the Ezekiel we are talking about. The one that doesn't have a beard and does, they've lost a chunk of his long hair, and he's no longer have chest hair. He's like Tony Knees again. He has a gauntlet, he has trunks, he has knee pads, and I think it's either kick pads on the Uh, yeah, it's the boots, and it's the white boots this time. And he lost a, a couple of pounds in his weight. So does that mean that we're getting Kevin Owens versus a light? I mean, Ezekiel at WrestleMania backlash? Can someone tell me? Are we gonna get that match? 
But that, but enough for that. Let's move on. We get an elimination chamber, and at this point, we have the Miz versus Rey Mysterio in an elimination chamber we match. At this point, I was gonna urge everyone watching Monday Night Raw to go for the reaching for the remote control and turn the TVs off. Because we're getting rematches that we've seen in a couple of times. On either that's on television or at pay-per-view or live events. It's on something like that. Give me a break. How do you think I'm gonna really take the series of matches between Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio 2 series? I mean Rey Mysterio and the Mayor series. Who these two were fighting in 2011 for the vacant WWE chat because CM Punk left the company. And that same night, we got buried by John Cena. <laughs> and Miz wins the match. And the Miz beats Rey Mysterio. After the match, Wait for it, wait for it. Via is here! Via has finally arrived to Monday Night Raw and took out the Mysterios. Now, call it, is he the Indian version of. the Indian version of Lars Sullivan, in my opinion? Where he wants to attack whoever the, the hell he sets his eyes on to. And I think he did get tiny reactions here in Texas. And I think this is the last all of it of Indian, to be honest with you. And then the Miz wins like a coward from Veer. And then Veer and Dominic. Veer takes out Dominic and Way. Proving that the Veer wants to actually face the Mysterious and WrestleMania backlash. And it and then damaged Dominic Mysterio, put him in a finisher and choke Dominic to the point where he's not going to save him. And Mia actually looks good actually, I'm not going to lie, he looks pretty good in, the, in everything. But the question is, but don't get, but... <laughs> and then the referee tries to break him up from the chokehold, and then he did at the last minute. And... To be honest with you, when he was in that faction with Jinder Mahal and Shanky, I think this was actually one of my favorite out of the group. Because I could have cared less about Jinder Mahal and Shanky. To be honest with you. You. But anyways, Rhea is finally alive, baby! We move on from that to Bianca Belair. Talking about... I was, she's thrilled over beating Becky Lynch at WrestleMania, which, shall I play the video? We'll do. to tell you in that promo there is a black eye from Bianca Bella which has got to be one of the biggest black eyes in WWE's history and I'm not using racism jokes no I'm not And of course, the hashtag in trending worldwide in the United States is WWE War. And I'm so surprised they don't use the hashtag nowadays name, The War After Mania. Which they've been doing that over the last years, like, like other years. Like in Ruthless Aggression, like in other eras, like the Ruthless, the Golden Era, when we had Mon when Monday Night Raw came along. 
the ruthless aggression error, the attitude error, and the current and in 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 20. Well, I think that's just my guess on when it comes to the hashtag War of the Mania. <laughs> and I'm so surprised people hasn't turned on Bianca yet, which expect me, trust me, they're gonna do it in months. When they think, when they think that, oh, this Ray sucks, she needs to drop the title, because she's been given the golden shovel. That's what these goons are gonna think. And while the she's talking, I'm gonna clean my bed up first. So, so, well, it's kind of funny the more you think about it, because last week, they made Bianca Bella look very, very strong by cutting Becky Lynch's hair, which people were saying after last week of the haircut segment, was this going to lead into a Bianca Bella heel turn? The answer was no, because I think that the haircut segment from last week was very stronger than Sonny Deville and Mandy Rose on SmackDown back in 2020. You remember that? Which you can watch on the WWE Network or on YouTube. Anyways, moving on from Bianca Bella. Moving on. A, we have a, a, a fucking NXT Championship match on Monday Night Raw. Cause somebody, well, well, I'm going to go look on YouTube for a second. How many times has the NXT Championship been defended on Monday Night Raw? Let's find out. How many times would the has the NXT champion been defended on Monday Night Raw? And I know that they defended it tonight. Let, let's take a look on, on it. All right, so now we're on YouTube. And the only times we had NXT Championship matches on Monday Night Raw are t Dolph Ziggler vs. Bomb Breaker good t on last tonight, and Seth Rollins vs. Adam Cole in 2019, and that's it. That is fucking it. But as far as your card goes, I mean, and overall, I just didn't know. And while this match was happening, I don't blame the people. Looking away from their TVs, is doing that. Because why are they selling us NX Tuesday night matches on Monday night? Can someone tell me in the comic section down below? Why are they selling us Tuesday night matches just on Monday nights? Also, Bobby Wood was in ringside. Was I mean, Robert Wood was at ringside with Dolph Ziggler. And of course, we had a rematch from NXT Stand at the Liver. Also, well, we're talking about that. I think it was Corey Graves doing the commercial break. Announced the main. Announced later on tonight, we're going to have a six man. Tag team match between Matt Riddle, Finn, I mean RK Bro, and Finn Balor taking on the, the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Usos, and Austin Theory. Which is probably the main event. Uh, yeah. Actually, no. It was the Street Puppet versus Alpha Academy. But nonetheless, this is pure laziness. And I gotta merge everyone. Again, like I said earlier on, with the, t with the Miz versus. Way. People would just want to look away, look at their phones, play on their portable consoles, look away from their TVs, TVs look at the YouTube. <laughs> and also, Bron Dolph, and it's kind of bullshit that they had Dolph Ziggler win the NXT Champion at Roadblock and then made him retain and forced 
to, to defend the title on Monday night on the war after WrestleMania. This is to the point where it is not going to become very boring. Like, if you thought Miz vs. Rey Mysterio was boring, this is easily worse than that. Then, one boy could do the spear which I think was Goldberg, was Bobby Lashley or Goldberg's spear to, to Dolph Ziggler. And then, after that, the kick failed, he went, he did like the Apollo Crews like lifting people up and then a power slam and win the NXT champion on Monday Night Raw. Again, I want to ask a question. Number one, why are they selling Tuesday Night Matches on Monday Night Raw? And do you care? Because Braun Breaker in people's eyes wants to see him beat Roman Reigns if Drew McIntyre can't do it. Because Braun has all the potentials. And of course, people may not be big on him like as far as the entrance moves are and everything down to the T goes. But this is pure lazy to put an NXT match on the war after WrestleMania. Like, look at Paige for an example in 2014. He won the Divas Champion pin, 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 on Monday Night War when he, she was an NXT Women's Champion. I don't know how to think about that. Dolph Ziggler needs to rehab for a second. Moving on. Bobby Lashley was in the win. Was in the. Moving on. Moving on. From that piss poor match. Bobby Lashley comes out and talks about his WrestleMania matchup. His WrestleMania Sunday victory against Almost. And number one. People are asking me the question coming out of WrestleMania Sunday. They, is Bobby Lashley. And people were saying Bobby Lashley could get his rematch at WrestleMania Backlash for the, his WWE title, aka the Undisputed Universal Champion. But it seems like it ain't happening, in my opinion. And after that, almost interrupts him. And at this point. Nobody cares, and even nobody cares about almost nowadays. Night one, when they put it in with AJ Styles, it was okay, but then it got stale to the fact when they became World Tag Team Champions. And then after that, MVP hits Bobby Lashley within the back, and almost so that it helps assault Bobby Lashley, and on Bobby Lashley, Lashley assaulted him and joined up with. And ditched Bobby Lashley for almost. At first, I was thinking, were we gonna get a low blow? The answer was no. It was just something about it. And then, and then the MVP turns heel, slaps Bobby Lashley multi when almost has the hurt lock. And then, and then assault beat the shit out of him. And this is probably one of the decent moves because almost needs a hype man. And MVP is the Paul Heyman I mean, of the Monday Night Raw. And also, where does this lead into Bobby Lashley? Because ringside, ringside news I means Bobby Lashley is now a, f a baby face. But please hand me over a lump of bleach. Because cause Bobby Lashley is going to get shoved down our foot and I'll be the first guy. I told you so, to the point where people are going to betray him, saying, I mean, please, get Bobby Lashley off TV. He's a failure. Really? Really? Why is he on TV as a baby face? When you know, as well as I do, in 2018, his baby face run failed. And then people started not caring about Bobby Lashley. And then, if we couldn't get any worse, they, they just turned him heel. And still, nobody cared, and if people didn't care, 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 and care. Moving on. So there's not even a good thing about this show. Probably, I think the best thing about the show is Carmella and, and Corey Graves. 
kissing each other. When Carmella wanted to get a little bit of Corey Graves, the fucking cop. To the point, I think it was Tom Phillips announcing we were going to get a matchup between Selena Vega and Carmella taking on the local competitors. Until Selena Vega. And then Selena Vega, AK Queen Selena, beat it up. Come, I see. Turned his back on Carmella. Meaning, is this leaving towards a Selena Vega basin? Just like Bobby Lash and Corey Graves. And then Carmella uses Corey Graves as a shield. Which is another thing we're going to be talking about tomorrow on the podcast. Corey Graves is being replaced on color because she's on the honeymoon. With Carmella. Which, tomorrow's episode, we're going to be talking about. Carmel and Corby Graves and the finish of the unification match. A finish of the unification match. Which we'll, we'll be talking about that on episode 2 of the broadcast tomorrow. So get ready for the broadcast episode 2 coming tomorrow. And then Corby Graves will come kisses at wingside. I like a fucking perfect at, revert at wingside. Moving on, moving on, RK Bro and Finn Balor versus the Usos. I want to tell you that bother you off. So after the last week's match of the world with the War and Smackdown take the battle once again, but this time Finn Balor and also Vivi both get added to the frame. Also, why is Finn wearing a blue tie when this isn't fucking Friday Night Smackdown? And correct me. I haven't seen Bella wear a blue tie in months. Correct me if I'm wrong. And I'm not gonna lie, Bella looked pretty decent along with Orton, like as far as that look goes. And and I can't say the same about Austin Fury, because you know it's fucking Austin Fury, probably potentially on face of being on the company. As also so Austin Fury close. And then punches Jimmy. And then Matt with the versus Austin. Austin Fury. And then Austin Fury gets kicked at wing side. And then Matt Riddle does a. Uh, tries to go for a backflip outside the, the wing. And then. Jake. And then. Wandy also made the hot. And on close line. I think it was Jay or Jimmy. And also punched. Kicked Austin. Punched Austin Fury out. To wing side, and Otto does his regular move, and it is RKO. And it does tries to go for his RKO until until Jimmy stopped the RKO, and then and then Austin Fury patted on Jimmy's. I think it was his ass, so he can make his tie. So he can make his time. So he can make his time. And then. And we didn't know what was going on until Austin Fury came in, drop kicked Randy Orton. And why are we getting six man tag matches on Monday Night Raw? A lot of six man tag matches on Monday Night Raw in 2022. And if they try to go for the coup de grace, and then Austin Fury goes for his finisher on the battle, and the battle reverses it and tries to go for his pin until I think it was JR Jimmy broke it up. To an RKO. And then the crowd was lit tonight. And then a super kick connect from Jay to Bell hitting his running move to an Austin Fury, another finisher by Austin Fury. When it was, you'll never see it coming. And then Austin Fury goes for one, two, three, and he beats. And he beats Austin Fury. And there was a crowd who got famous from that. Probably because. Who's wearing fucking Johnson Cena hair in 2022? Again, I want to ask people a question. Why are we getting multiple six-man t- 
tag tag team on Monday Night Raw in two thousand and fucking twenty two. Why? I wanna ask everyone the question in the fucking comment section. Why are we getting tag team matches? Even though we're probably gonna get them all on on Friday night on Friday fucking night SmackDown. After that, after that, we come, we go into a te a tornado tag team match between the Street Profits and Alpha Academy, so they can find it out for a, for a tag team tele shot. So, of course, Alpha Academy comes out, attacks Angel or Dawkins, and in Montez Ford. When Otis was focusing on Angel Dawkins, is focused on Montez Ford. And the referee tried to break this brawl up. <laughs> and then they were fighting out. And Chad Gable is a, is a star. I'm not going to lie. Along with Otis. And then Adam Pearce comes out. I'm not going to lie. He has all potential written on him. Even though he's never going to be the face of company. Well, he's the face of tag team division in 2022. After that, Adam Pearce comes out. And announces we are gonna have a Texas Tornado tag team matchup. So, for a winner to get a title shot at any time, I'm pretty sure. I think it wasn't announced that they're gonna use their title shot at WrestleMania Backlash. And um, correct me if I'm wrong. Can someone fill me in the comment section down below? And then, and then. And yes, it was a Texas Tornado match. I was right, though. And I think at this point, like right now, I have people. I don't blame the people reaching for the remote controls and clicking and either changing the channel or turn their TVs off. And because so we had upcoming live events, many win. Winner Walker for SmackDown. Do you want MI for SmackDown? Want Manchester MA on SmackDown? Meaning, does it stand for Manchester? Meaning, are we going in Manchester in 2022? Hopefully, win Manchester. So, and then later, and then, but back to the matchup himself. Otis grabbed a table. And then Otis. Tries to go put Chad through the table until Chad stopped putting the Montez forward and put his foot stuck on the on the tumbuckle. And then and then one of the tumbuckle pads fell off. Pretty much, correct me if I'm wrong. The tumbuckle fell off, off. And then Angel Dawkins put it Chad through a table and he heard a Tumbuckle on his crotch. And then five stuff for a table. And Montez Ford and Angel Dawkins beats Alpha Academy, meaning they're gonna get a tag team title shot against RK Bro. Oh, down the line. This is a good thing. And then last but not least, Roman Reigns is in the ring. And shall I play this clip? Let's do it. I'm sorry if there's the internet problem. My internet, to be honest with you, is a piece of shit. I'm not gonna lie. Start with the internet. Start with the internet shit. Please, get off my TV internet. Uh, 
And at this point, the best thing about the show. Yep, then he's now going to be on Smackdown. think about war after Wrestlemania I think to me that is going to be one of the most god awful aka the worst war of 2022 and the worst Monday Night War of 2022 when will the WWE open their eyes and realize we need changes right now you do know that we got double or nothing coming soon we got and you know that we got double or nothing coming in May. And after the shit we got tonight, how do you think we can take get us ready for double or nothing? That's one of the questions I, we all want to know. But enough with today's video, I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you. Yeah. And by the way, I'm going to play some WWE 2K22. And this show can kiss my ass. Have a nice day, kids.